Hello folks and welcome back to the plot. Looks like we're in for another glorious day. So we're going to continue with the planting out. The big jobs I've got left now is to plant out the onions, uh, sow the carrots, sow the parsnips, then also get the auto wicking pot sorted. That includes the peppers in the greenhouse in the garden. And also down on the allotment there, we'll have the tomatoes, cucumbers, aubergines, melons, whatever else we can think of. So, waste no time, let's crack on. One of the first jobs I'm going to look at is sowing the carrots. I've just taken the polycarb lid off, and uh, as you can see, it's dried out a little bit. That's all there. Uh, I think it was the last video. I put about four or five inches of sifted soil in, and so with the heat in there, it's, at least it's warmed the soil up. So all I've got to do now, I'll give that a good soaking, probably for, let it go in for about an hour, and then I'll start sowing the carrots. Rather than waste time waiting for the water to soak in the carrot tanks, I thought I'd have a look at planting the runner beans. I'm just giving the beans a good watering. Those are in the Viziroot cell trays, as you can see. And I'm very happy with the way they've performed, ready to go out now. And in the bean trench, we've got the lettuce. Them are just bulking up nicely, ready to start picking we are. And plant them in together happily, they'll live happily together. This long, slim ball plant has really come into its own again. I produced a hole a little bit deeper than the root ball, dropped it in and just gently wound the stem up to the cane. As you can see, that's well on its way to reaching the top. Do remember when you wind these up to wind them in the counterclockwise direction that way as you move up the cane. I planted two already, but I thought I'd open the packs up. These are really soaking, I've given them a good watering. Look at this strange thing, I've never come across this one before. I don't know what's happened there, but uh, <laughs> it's like a bit of a mutant. Anyway, I'm going to select the best ones for planting, obviously, and see how we get on. I've got the runners in. I've put two plants to per cane, and just put a little bit of loose string around just to weld them on until they start twining themselves. Water them in with a bit of um, water out the water butt, and then I think I'll give them a feed a bit later on, probably at the end of the week. Pop back into the allotment greenhouse, and uh, on this wicking system, because I'm having aubergines and melon growing up there, I thought I'd better get something up to climb. And I found these two pieces of mesh doing nothing out on the allotment, so I thought I'd make use of them. I'm going to fix them up to them cane framework up there and allow them to climb up there, and that's a, one more less thing to worry about. Next job on the anvil is to get these beetroot in, them screaming to go out. And as usual, I said before, they'll be going in between the rows of the tomatoes. So that's the first batch of beetroot sown. Two rows and there's about 12 plants in each row. Uh, the varieties vault hardy. I've still got a few more left and there's some just actually germinating so uh, I'll probably put those in the salad bed as and when they come up. Morning folks. You join me for an early start on the plot this morning. Looks like we're in for another glorious day. A little bit chilly at the moment, but we'll soon warm up once we get going. If you haven't gathered already, today's job, I'm going to try and get the onions in, or at least some of them, and they'll be going in the bed behind me. They're not growing as many as I did last year. You may remember I grew the big calces and that. I've only just finished the last one. Still growing them, but not so many, probably only about a dozen, 15, 
and actually bought those as plug plants in from DT Brown. I've got a few other varieties and all, so just like the brassicas, the first thing I'm going to do is sort them out into the different families and then we can decide where they're going to be planted. Okay, let's get going. As usual, I always put my marker board down for the first row, then just line them up by eye for the rest of the rows. For the calcium, the big onions, I do eight in the line. Um, I'm going to just crack on now and try and get these in, so there'll be no interruption with the filming. If you want to have a look how I do them in more detail, take a look at this video up the side, Growing May Daisy series, and that's seed from onion from start to finish. Just a quick word about these calcium plants. As I said before, I bought these as plug plants from DT Brown. And taking out the roots, you can see that, I don't think you can see that, the root ball on that, it's fantastic. And I think these are about 6 99 for 20 plants, and I think I've got 20, 30, almost 30 anyway. And I'm thinking now, is it worth actually sowing the seed, giving them butter and meat, and some people use lights for the price of that? It's I think in the future, if I do do these, I probably won't be growing from seed again, just using the plug plants. Anyway, crack on. I'll just give you a quick update, folks. Those are the calces in. They do look a bit bedraggled, but they'll soon pick up them for you. Got three rows in, uh, 23. There's one on the end there missing. Got a plant put in, but it didn't look too good, so I didn't bother putting it in. I'll just quickly turn you around now and show you what else we got. As I said before, I sort them out in families, and this first row here of the Vento, and these are like what they call the 8 ounce, only or 250 gram now. And next door to them are the Tough Ball, very, very similar onion. And on here is the first of the banana shallots, these are the red ones called the Long Red Florence. These are in the container wise trays, as you can see, it's got a, <laughs> a decent root ball on them, nice thick onions as well. And bringing up the rear, I've got one tray there again in the container wise stuff and now's the Alista. Right, I'm just gonna pop in for a coffee and then we'll see about getting these done. Well by the way, you can see that there, I always give the root ball of the onions as well, a dusting of mycorrhizal. Right now the onions are sorted and we're gonna look in it now, kitting out this greenhouse with the auto wicking. Um first of all I'm starting off with the quad grows, there's two here and two down that side, and in there to go in the cucumbers. This one here is my old favourite called Mini Munch. I've got three of those, and there's another one called Passandra. With these self-wicking systems, it is quite important to try and get the tanks fairly level, because otherwise you could have a flood of water down one end and nothing at the other end. Not so bad with the water pots, because they got their own flood and drain valve in each pot. Anyway, that's the first one potted up with the wick out. Get the rest done. So that's the cucumber sorted. Two there, a mini munch, and across the other side here, we have a mini munch on the left, and on the right is a passandra. I got the passandra because I had four mini munch, and I think there was a slugs or something demolished one. So rather than have an empty pot, I just picked one of them up off the market. It's a couple of quid, I think. Um, I've watered them in. The compost is settled. I may need to top it up just a bit later on. Anyway, I'm going to fill the reservoir now. That goes through that little lid there. Just take that off and fill it straight into the oil. And then we can start looking at this new wicking system. And in there is going to be going the aubergines, melons, and who knows what else. I think I've gone as far as I can for today. I've already done the back which I've showed you, but also on top of that, we've got the uh, tomatoes all planted, all eight of them. Those are the uh, cherry type. And uh, the only thing left now is to plant these four in the auto wicking system. And until I've done this stuff in the greenhouse, in the garden, I can't actually know what's going to be left over to go in there. In the meantime, I'll just show you, run you through what tomatoes we've got. Now starting off over this side, the first one we got is one called uh, Sweet Aperitif. And the next one is one called Montello. And the next two, both of these are toddler. 
First time I've ever ground these, so I thought I'd give them a double shot. Moving over to this side now, we've got a cocktail crush. That's one of the cocktail families. Next one here, we've got the cedar now. Alongside that, we have crocchini. And last but not least, it's one of my favourite cherry tomatoes actually, and that's called Sweet Million. Well, finally got round to sowing some carrots. So this tank really took some wet in it. I must have watered it four or five times. It did keep drying out. However, nature's finest watering system kicked in. Last night we had some lovely overnight rain. It soaked in and this is just about ready now to get sown. I've got me trusty grid as a spacer. And there's me usual carrots. These are the sweet candle. So I'm going to crack on and get this one done. Still got some left in there. <laughs> so uh, that's about it for this one. Many thanks for watching. There's plenty more stuff to go out on the allotment and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.